You guys good this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys have given me a few minutes to preach this morning. Grateful for that. All week long, the word that's been on my heart is um, perception. Just understanding. Understanding certain ways of God and how he works and all the things that he does and how he speaks into our lives. You know, our world has been trying to understand God for so many years, and they're trying to understand the different aspects of God and who He is and how He works and the words that He says and and how they come out of His mouth and how we are to take them into our hearts. You know, when, when God spoke the world into existence, when He said, let there be light, and there was light, When he spoke that into existence, the world is still expanding. The universe is still expanding. Things are still stretching and going further and further and further and further. The universe keeps getting more vast and more vast and more vast. From him saying, let there be light. The big bangers are trying to study who is this God and is he real? And they're trying to disprove him. But the more they try to disprove him, they're disproving that he's real, that he is who he says he is. But their perception is missing one thing. When the world tries to explain God away, they have a perception of God, who they think God is, and they try to explain God away. And sometimes when we have problems in our life, we try to um, put God in a box with our problems, with the things that we're going through in life. But God cannot be put in a box. Neither can your problems, your struggles, your battles. And there's something that you might be missing this morning. Randy, thank you for coming and giving your heart to God this morning. Thank you for receiving him, and we're going to keep watching the fruit from your life because today is the new beginning in your life. Today is a new beginning of your yes. Today, today, listen, today of all days, Randy, today you are centered up with Jesus. You're no longer on the outside. You're not even in this middle place, but you are centered with Jesus because you received him in your heart. All things have passed away and all things have become new, so you're here. You're right here in the center of God's will right now. And what you do with that is up to you. How you grow that is up to you. My advice to you is get in the word of God, all of you, and stay in the word of God daily, daily, daily. Because when you do, you're going to understand more and more and more. And you're going to lean not into your own understanding, but on the every word of God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this morning for this word, perception. God, we ask this morning you would give us a clear understanding of what you're trying to speak to us this morning in layman terms this morning. We praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we rejoice with you for the soul that was saved this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In Proverbs, you have your Bibles turned to Proverbs. We're going to read from chapter 1 and chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Let me start with verse 5. Verse 5, it says, A wise man will hear and increase in learning. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. And a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. To understand a proverb or a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles, this is the key right here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And fools despise wisdom and instruction. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge I want to go over to chapter 9. If you go to chapter 9 of verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So you have these banger, that big bangers that are trying to figure out God, they're trying to understand God. They're lacking the one thing. They're lacking the fear of God. 
That's why they're not understanding. And when you stand on this middle ring, and we're going to use these rings probably all year long, when you're out here, you're not saved where he was. You're here. When you get saved, you come in the middle, and then you start leaning on your own understanding. You start fading back to this realm here where you're like, God's not the center of your walk. God's not the center of your life. And you're out here on the outside in the middle ring, and you're thinking, I've got this. This is okay. I'm good. But then you have all your problems, the things that happen in your life, the situations that you go through. And sometimes you start blaming God for those things. And sometimes you want to give up and just say, I'd just rather be out here because God's not working for me. No, what's happened is you're not working for God. You're not being in the center of his will so you could do what he's called you to do. That's what the problem is. And a lot of these people fear, they, they lack the fear of God. In verse 9, in verse, in chapter 9 and verse 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So I'm going to read in verse 1, chapter 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Then we're going to go over to verse 10 and 9. It says, And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So I took those two and put them together. Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Perceiving things the way that God sees things. In our minute mind, we look at things and we, and we, and we, and we kind of, there's times that you probably have, because I have, you're thinking, okay, well, if there's a God and God exists, he existed and he's always been, how, was he, how has he always been? So you start thinking, the enemy starts grabbing those things, starts throwing these things at you and getting you all tripped up over these things that really you wouldn't even be able to understand the fact of that always existing or always being. We couldn't even comprehend that. That's why we won't understand that. But when we meet him face to face, he will... Even if we, if we want it, he will explain those things to us. But right now, what we try to deal with is our own life, our own situations, our own problems, and try to understand the perception of our life and how we live in life. There's many times in the Bible it talks about perceiving the woman at the well that Faye was talking about this morning, the woman at the well. She said to Jesus, I perceive that you were a prophet. So because he was telling her who she was and what she'd been through, she understood a little bit more, and she perceived it a little bit differently outside of her way of thinking. So she started perceiving Jesus for who he was, calling him a prophet. He is a prophet. He's a prophet of prophets. So she perceived right. We have to look at a situation and, 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 and not put God in a box, but go, okay, God, I, I, I want to understand. I want to understand what you're doing here in my life, and I want to understand the solution to the problem that I see before me. And God wants to give you a solution to that problem, but he wants you to be in the center of his will, in the middle of his will, because when you're in the middle of God's will, no matter what the world throws at you, listen, no matter what the world throws at you, you can count it as joy. That's joy. No matter what he throws at you, you count it as joy. You might not understand it, and you might not know how to get out of it, but you count it as joy and let God do what he does and work through those situations because that's the God that we serve. You're not going to always understand everything about God, and that's okay. But the more you get in the word of God, the more you center up and tighten up that center when you're with him, the better off you're going to be because you're going to start understanding things more. The Word of God, you're going to understand it more. I understand more about the Word of God now than I did five years ago. Five years ago, I felt like I was probably ignorant looking back. I mean, I'm ignorant and don't know anything compared to what I know now. And the more you dig in the Word of God, the more you will feel like you were ignorant, and now you've come to understand something. you come to, to know something now. And I, I was reading a book. This was this past summer, and I, and I come across it again yesterday, and it says this, or, or this, this week, Wednesday, I think, Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, I come across this, this in this book, and I, can't even, I don't even know the book because I took a picture of it. But it says this. It's talking about fear, the fear of the Lord. And, and it says this, so uh, unless a man fears the Lord, okay, unless a man fears the Lord, meaning he has the proper view of God, which results in a right relationship with God. 
So this is the meaning of fear of the Lord, meaning he has the proper view of God. Seeing God, how we're supposed to see him, how he designed us to see him. He's got so much information for you and I that we should understand some of these things. But because of the life that we live, living on the outside of sinner, we don't understand and perceive the things correctly. But it says, meaning that he has the proper view of God, which results in a right relationship with God. If you do not have this, he says, in this book, he says, he has no real hope of living an abundant life or an abundant kind of life. Until a man sees God rightly, he cannot rightly view life. Until you see God rightly, until you perceive him rightly, you cannot even view life right or correctly. Because we're leaning on our own way of thinking. Can you imagine, can you imagine when uh, Nicodemus, when he was at the, now I've lost all my, no, here it is. You know the story of Nicodemus? You guys know the story? It's in John chapter 3. Nicodemus, listen, he was a ruler of the Jews. And he snuck around and he come to Jesus at night. So he's like sneaking around. He's like, man, there's something to this guy. There's something going on here. And I, I, I just got to wrap my head around it. So he comes to Jesus at night and he says, um, he says, what must I do? Listen, he said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to understand these things that you're saying? What must I do? To understand these things. And Jesus said to him, he said, truly, truly, listen, when he says truly, truly, pay attention. I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now you can imagine what's going through his mind here. So Nicodemus, he's thinking in a human form, or he's thinking in human terms. So he asks the question, which might seem silly, and it probably is because we know the answer to this pretty quick if, we, if you think quick enough on it. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? So now his mind is going to a worldly way of thinking. So his perception of this is like, like kindergarten perception, what Jesus is trying to say. How can a man be born again when he is old? He cannot enter in a second time. And it says he cannot enter in a second time in his mother's womb asking the question and be born again. Can he? And Jesus said again, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water, that's the birth from your mother. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Truly, truly, I say unto you, lest one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the first time it says, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, in verse 3, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now he's saying truly, truly, after he explains this truth to him, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So you dissect that because there's so much into this. There's really, there's really so, I mean, my mind, my mind like travels and reads in between the lines so much and there's so much to this. I thought about in this part, I thought about cloning, people cloning people, and this is really stuff that's happening. These people that are cloned were not born of water. They will never taste of this. It doesn't matter what they do. They will never taste of this. That's where my mind went to it. So we could go all day right there, but I'm not going to. But when I read in between the lines, I think the Lord starts showing me all these things that the world is trying to do. The world is trying to put God aside, and they're trying to become God. And he's saying, unless they're born of water and of spirit, they will not see the kingdom of God. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not enter into the kingdom of God. Ever will it happen. So Nicodemus had this perception in the, in the hum, human thinking of, wow, can I really go back into my mother's womb and be born again? That's how silly that was. 
No, you cannot. If you don't understand yet, no, you cannot go back into your mother's womb and be born again. But you can, as Randy did this morning, ask Jesus to come into your heart, live in your life, and receive him as your Lord and Savior. And and repent of the things that you've done and the things that you've did. That way you can be born again. We have a pure example this morning of what it looks like. Thank you. I mean, you're part of this message this morning, Randy. Thank you, because we get a picture of someone being born again. And how simple it is. The simplicity of it. Now we get a view, like a visual this morning. We got a visual of that birth this morning. You might try to wrap your head around that. It's like, well, how'd that even happen this morning when this was part of the message? That's how God works. That's what he does. That's how we, when you start perceiving him in those ways, you're like, well, God orchestrated, God orchestrated that a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago for today. When you start understanding that God thinks way, way, way outside of the box, way outside of the box for you and I, what a good God we serve this morning. I could go into verse after verse and scripture after scripture of of, of perception of these things that God says, that Jesus says. You know, he talks in, I believe it's in John, or it might be Mark, Matthew, Luke, Mark, I think. Hold on, help me, Randy. I don't think I have it here. Where where they're fighting about, the, the, the Pharisees are coming and saying, well, your disciples are eating these things, and they're like, they're not washing their hands. And Jesus said to him, Jesus said to him, he said, it's not what you take into your mouth that defiles you, but it's what comes out of your mouth. Because he says what comes in, into your mouth goes and then you, you get rid of it and, and you guys know how that works. And so, but he said this, what comes out of your mouth. What he's really talking about, he's not really talking about the dirty hands. He's talking about what you come, take into your, into your mouth or into your eyes or into your ear gate. All these different places you take in what goes into the heart of a man. What goes into the heart. So, and then that's what, that's what comes out and defiles a man. So when you perceive this, when you try to understand this, what Jesus is saying, grabbing the whole reality of it, we're thinking food, and they are talking food in this period. But but when you go deeper in that, the songs that you listen to go into the heart of man, and they come out in your words or in your actions. The video games that our kids are playing today come out in their actions and how they live. It's sad. It's sad. It really is. Shelly and I got the privilege this week to have four of our 12 grandkids at one time. You know, we have a daycare with like 40-something kids, but when it comes to four of your own in your house, you know, have all them helpers, it's a whole different ball game. And uh, I was up from, I think, midnight to 4 o'clock in the morning with one of them that, that cried all night long. And I'm like, well, what's he want? I mean, I changed his diaper. Like, we changed like three times in, in four hours. Like, well, what do you want? And we fed him. And like, what do you want? So finally, she, 2 o'clock in the morning, something texts his mom. I was like, what's this boy want? Well, he wants to be in front of Coco Melon and watch the TV. No, we had to put, I, I'm like, I, I was going nuts. I mean, I, I was like 4 o'clock in the morning. I had to handle sleep. I'm like, I'm like laying on the couch. and like barricading him in. So he's like laying there. I'm like, you know, and, and, you know, it's stuff you're not supposed to do. But I was doing it. And I put him in a little walker thing. And finally I turned Coco Melon on. He's like, falls asleep. What comes in, comes out. What we're letting come in the minds of our children will come out. What we're letting them watch 
will come out. What they're letting them listen to will come out. It will. It has to. It has to. That's why we need to learn to renew their minds to the things of Christ so they can have the right perception of who they are and whose they are. So when they get older, they will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are children of God. That they are loved by God. I'm going to break it down in a simple form for you. Then we'll close. You might drive this nice, fancy car, but you got bills that need paid over here, and you got things you're struggling with over here and things you're struggling with over here. And you think in your mind, well, I need this car because if I have this car, it runs good. It's going to get me from A to B. I'm not going to have no struggles. I'm not going to have no problems. But God might be saying, I want you to sell the car, get what profit you can get out of it, pay what bills you can pay, and you're not going to have that thousand, two thousand dollar a month payment. That's what God would be saying. And then we argue in our minds like, well, you know, God, I need that car because it's going to get me here. I'm not going to break down. So we try to bring all the things in that why we do need that. When God's saying, you know, I want to help you out here because I am your banker. And if you give it to me, I will return you the best investments in this situation. So this is what happens. You've got you living in the center of God's will, hopefully. But you've got all these other people that are living in the center of God's will too. So here you go. You take your car. God, I'm going to do what you say to do. And you take your car and you sell it. And you buy one of them Rolls Canarlies. Everybody ever had a Rolls Canarly? You even know what a Rolls Canarly is. It rolls down one hill, Canarly get up the next. I've had several Rolls Canarlies. I've had several of them. Rolls down the hill and can barely get up the next. The one that sticks out the most was a little blue car. And I remember I went to pass somebody on the highway, and it was a and I went and there's cars coming. I finally got this where you could pass, and I got beside him like, and I pulled up and I pulled up beside him like, and they're right here beside me, and all of a sudden, I'm, and it's all it had. And this guy didn't speed up at all. He's just looking at me, and I'm looking at him. He's looking at me, and I'm looking at him. And I just finally backed off and got back behind him because I couldn't get around him. That was one of the Rose Canaries I had. It rolled down one hill, can hardly get up the next. But imagine when you listen to God and you do what God says to do. So, you, so now you sell your nice car, you buy this piece of junk car, and you take and you, you make it, and you get back and forth, and you keep dumping oil in it, you keep doing whatever it does to keep the thing running. And then all of a sudden, one of them other brothers or sisters that's living in the center of God's will, they're like, look at what they just did. You see what they, they're driving that car. Because when you're in the center of God's will, God lays things on your heart to do for other people. So, so it's good to be in the center of God's will because you perceive things so much different than people who are not. So you, so you, you got this guy, he sells his car, he's, he's driving a junk piece of car, dumping all the oil he can into it, but it's cheaper than the payment that he was making on it, and it's embarrassing. You don't want anybody to know, really, he's driving that car, or she's driving that car, and all of a sudden, you have a brother or sister over here. It's like they're watching the situation. They knew that you gave it up to get out of debt. They got all this money in the bank, and they're, they're like, you know what? Let's buy him a car. Let's buy him a car. See, their perception of what's going on in the city, they, they've already got a golly perception of this thing. And see, the person that sold the car grabbed that perception. Said, God, if you want me to do this, you know best in all situations. You're going to cause me to be blessed out of this situation. When you're obedient to God, it doesn't matter what it is. If he tells you to sell everything, sell it all, he'll give you back what he wants you to have. And you'll be blessed more than you were blessed before. That's how God works. We don't have to understand everything, but we have to understand that God is a God of miracles and God is a God of love and God is a God that loves you so much and he wants the best for his children. And sometimes the best will look like a broken down, beat up car to get your bills paid and on time and caught up to where he can get you back to what he wants you to have. 
So this morning I challenge you to center up with God. And when you do, watch what he does with that. Watch how he grows you. Watch how he changes things in your life. Remember, he knows best in every situation. So when you're going through a trial, a struggle, a tribulation, count up for joy. And know that he has your best interest in view. Know that he has your best interest. He, he does not want to give his children bad things. He wants to give you good things. And sometimes the good things we look at in a whole different aspect, but grab a hold of how he sees things. Grab a hold of how God sees you. Grab a hold of how God sees your problem and your situation that you're going through right now. Some of you are going through dire situations, and you don't know how to get out of a situation or how to get out of a problem. Let God have his way with that problem. Let him have his way with that problem. See it how he sees it. Understand it how he understands it. And the only way you're going to do that is for the fear of the Lord. You're going to have that knowledge. And you're going to have that understanding. I don't mean be afraid of God. There's a difference. Fearing the Lord. Fearing how powerful he is. How majestic he is. How wonderful he is. Let's stand. So take your problem this morning and insert his view of what your problem is to find the solution to your problem. Think outside of the box this morning. Don't put God in a box ever. Think outside of the box, outside of your way of thinking, of the worldly way of thinking, and think his way. The word of God says, lean not on your own understanding, but every word of God. You will prosper with that. We are supposed to prosper. Every one of us are supposed to prosper. And for some, prospering might be getting that Rhodes Canarly for a season. That way they can be blessed. That might be your prospering moment. So no matter what you're going through this morning, Ask him about it. Ask him to show you how he wants you to, to see this problem or this situation. See it from his view. See it from his eyes. And watch. It'll change everything. It'll change it all. And Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for this simple word this morning. Perception. Lord, that we would understand you and your ways. That we would understand who you are. And how you do things that are so much different than how we have been taught to do things. So much different. So we thank you, Father, that you're moving in this congregation this morning. You're moving in the hearts of your people this morning. The struggles, the battles, the problems that they're dealing with this morning, God, they're giving them to you. God, that you will give them that understanding. I thank you for people centering up with you, coming to that place of rest in you, that they can count all their burdens as joy. I praise you for that this morning. I praise you. If you want to come this morning and bring your burdens to the altar, bring them and give them to him. Let him have his way with them. Sometimes it's better to come forward and just acknowledge that before man that you are struggling in a situation. Your brothers and sisters can pray with you and help you and pray over you. Sometimes it's good to share your situation with people that they can, they can pray into it with you. Don't do it alone. Don't go through your struggles alone. Don't go through your battles alone, but let him have his way. We thank you, Father, this morning. We love you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Men, we'll see you Wednesday for Bible study.